So I just wanted to make a second video here, as I discussed, uh, about the Vive uh, wireless adapter that everyone kind of turned away uh, based on the, the gray screens, blue screens, and a disconnect. Um, I'm going to go with maybe a design limitation or a design maybe flaw. Uh, but if you look at most users, it seems, you know, you know, three out of five returned them. So what I had to do originally, um, I had an OG Vive, um, and it would get super, super hot. Um, and then obviously it would go into the blue screen and disconnect. So, uh, first it was software based. So if you look under your settings, uh, under your VR settings for your steam VR, um, you're going to find a setting for your controllers. Um, that says something along the lines of, uh, turn off after five minutes of, uh, play. What you want to do is make sure that your controllers are set to never turn off. Something happens with the adapter and the headset. I don't know why it defaults, but it's almost like it confuses your headset and then put your headset in sleep mode and that'll disconnect your uh, wireless right off the hop. That'll be a huge major problem. That'll fix some of it. But as you notice, you'll play um, and it's well documented and it's, you know, obviously shown here with a big pad that this unit does get super hot. And so then heat seemed to kind of heat soak the... Uh, the wireless card inside i'm going to assume and from that it would cause a disconnect so what most users did um to fix that is is put a fan top mount five volts uh what i will do is i'll leave a link uh in the description uh for the parts that i used um i purchased everything from amazon obviously just because of shipping being quick and then as well as, as a good price so a couple things, I guess, what we started off with is obviously um, you'd be in the middle of game. It would go blue screen. You'd have to sit there, wait, wait, and wait. And then you'd eventually, if you're lucky, you would come back on. You'd still be in gameplay or you'd be dead. Um, so obviously super frustrating. And most people at that point would basically just return it. Um, at 400 bucks Canadian, um, I can totally uh, understand that. So um, obviously with the... The fix for the controllers not shutting off that did help a lot but it's still a, a minute this unit got hot it definitely downgraded its uh, quality and then from there just disconnected so for starters um with the mod itself and then i'll go on to some specs that i i really not sure if their recommended specs are exactly on point with what they're saying and i'll kind of give you an idea uh, for what generations I had before, some settings in the BIOS that I changed that helped as well. Um, but for starters, so this guy here is just a moment here, 40 mil, 40 millimeter uh, quiet fan. I'll, like I said, I'll leave you the link. Uh, it's five volts. Good thing about this, you don't have to cut anything. It comes with a harness built onto it. And then a good thing about the wireless adapter, you would click that in, it turns it to a USB, comes with it, and then you can actually plug that into the actual adapter itself and power this fan from here. So as long as the ACC5 wireless program is running, this will spin. If it's turned off, it won't spin. Another thing I noticed as well um, is that the cable that came with it must have had a lower gauge uh, USB cable. So I think that was kind of limiting the amperage from the battery to the wireless. So what I ended up doing is going on Amazon, and again, I'll leave a link. Uh, I got a Ranky USB 3.0 Type-A um, to obviously USB 3, um, six-foot cable. And as you can tell, uh, I'll try to show you on the camera here. It's a little bit thicker than your standard USB cable. And I found that um, also helped because the one that came with the ACC Vive was pretty, pretty, pretty thin. Um, so it may have been limiting um, the, the, the amperage, we'll say. And then obviously now, um, because I added uh, a fan, I knew that I would need additional power. Um, but then again, even when I was using the original, I purchased an aftermarket battery to get a, a little bit more play time. So what I did end up buying a anchor, um, again, link will be in the description, 
a power core speed, 20,000 milliamp hour Qualcomm quick charger 3.0. And so something that they stressed with having these batteries, the 3.0 uh, is what it had to have. So when you plug it in, it's got enough juice to power the headset. Um, this guy, I probably can get a good solid five hours out of playing, maybe more if I wanted. Um, whereas the old battery, you'd be lucky to get, you know, two hours, fingers crossed. So now I solved gameplay, what I believe is amperage going to the actual wireless, the heating issue. Um, and after that, that seemed to fix most of it. Um, I'd maybe get a blue screen and a disconnect maybe once a month, we'll say. Once a month, but very, very random. And so I started trying to kind of eliminate it completely. Um, so what I did notice when I went my BIOS is that my PCI slot was set to auto. Um, as soon as I put that to Gen 3, pretty much no more blue screens anymore so i have a feeling that maybe it was a compatibility issue um or if you have it on auto it doesn't maybe take full potential i don't know exactly but i know that by doing that pretty much eliminated everything um, for the blue screens um one thing i will suggest which i did learn by when moving ram around is make sure your machine has a minimum of 16 gigabits of memory anything less than that um, this sucker is hungry for for memory as well as cpu uh, my original setup was the i7 6700k uh, overclocked to 4.2 i believe um, 16 gigabits ddr4 and it ran good don't get me wrong it ran really good i had a, a gtx 1080 uh, non-ti uh, the asus strix uh, but I found that it still felt like it was bottlenecking for CPU just because this guy was so, so hungry for it. Now with my i7 10th Gen 7700F with my RTX 3080, um, I think it has more than enough power now. No bottlenecking and that would have helped. So what I would suggest is don't throw this guy, you know, to the garbage and, and, and bypass this product and forget about being wireless because obviously uh, VR should be wireless personally um, I've done cable management and it was just it was still cumbersome at some point it would pull on your neck um, you couldn't crouch couldn't play uh, the minute you put on wireless uh, as anyone with like the quest twos and stuff uh, would know that you know that's the way VR is meant to be played and uh, I remember even just putting up with the gray screens just because I wanted to be wireless uh, because I didn't want to go back to being wired because once you go wireless, you just can't go back. Um, so other than that, um, with the fan and the USB cable and the battery, um, this guy stays absolutely cool now. Um, another thing is just always make sure that the connection for your antenna where you screw it in is always tight. That'll obviously affect your antenna. Um, I try to keep my antenna within a close distance of my play space. Um, I don't think the ranges is what they advertise as well. Um, so I do that. But other than that, I would say between the battery, USB cable, the fan, um, that's definitely going to eliminate, if not all problems from the disconnect. And then it's worth, you know, buying again. And you can, you can find that on Amazon off the HTC Vive. Uh, website and then other than that if you guys have any questions um, I'd be more than happy to answer them in the comments um, thank you for tuning in and uh, thank you and uh, again see you on the other side